I'm recording this uh, literally one minute into Friday the 25th of November so Black Friday is officially upon us and um, there is some good deals um, even compared to the one that I did before. Um, now the reason I am doing this is because a little bit of a re-record so you guys are aware of the deals that are going on and as well the build slightly changed so we'll get into it and some options that you can go for and especially some higher tier parts. So this is a budget build again. If you guys need higher tier parts, just let me know and I can advise you on that in the comments, but let's get into the budget build. This build comes to $1,174.34, so a pretty reasonable price, especially for this type of build. So let's start off with the CPU. So we've gone with the Ryzen 5 3600. It's 180 or 179 from Computer Lounge. Now the reason I have gone for it is because it's a 6 core processor and it's PCIe 4.0. So with graphics card options you won't be limiting yourself in terms of especially AMD's RX line such as the 6600 or 6600 XT that should have PCIe 4.0 instead of 3.0. So you won't be limited in that factor at all. Um, it's a relatively reliable CPU and it's been out for a little while now. Um, it's a pretty good uh, price at under sub $200. Let's hold on to another option for the CPU as well as the Ryzen 5 5600. Um, it's a newer processor, it's a 6 core processor, it's 235 from Computer Lounge, which is actually pretty reasonable, or 238.99 from PB Tech. That's a very good price considering how recent the CPU is, and it's very good for gaming, it's quite quick. Um, you guys can also have a look at the 12400F that went on special as well. 12400F, i5 12400F is pretty good. Or well, the 11400F are also good options from Intel as well to have a look at. But I think the Ryzen CPU is probably the way to go, especially the budget ones at the moment. Um, I think they are probably the better options at this time. Again, the Intel ones, they're not bad. It's just this price is really attractive, $180 um, for a 6 core processor. Let's hold on to the motherboard. So we've gone with the MSI B550 Pro VDH. 194.35 from PB Tech. So it seems to me like um, prices are really expensive for motherboards at the moment. I actually have no idea why. Um, it maybe could be a shortage of them. They are quite pricey at the moment. Um, nearly $200 for a B550 in New Zealand. So prices have gone up for them, which is a little bit weird. Um, but yeah, nothing too special on it. Uh, you can take up to 4.6 of RAM on it. PCIe 4.0 capable and has a M.2 slot there for your SSD. For the RAM, I've gone with the Kingston Fury B 16 gigs DDR4 3200s. It's CL16 and it's only $89 from Computer Lounge and PB Tech. This is pretty much like cheap, like a good kit to start on. 60 gigs is quite a bit, so that's very, very good. And it basically works out to $40 per 8GB and that's pretty reasonable considering that second hand wouldn't be much cheaper than that so I think that's a really good that's really good pricing um, nothing special about this one as DDR4 3200 CL16 so it's pretty standard and if you guys needed some RGB as well it's $10 more 98 99 from PB Tech or $99 from Computer Lounge same thing just got RGB on the top if you guys want to go for that for storage, I've just picked a singular M.2 NVMe SSD. So this one is a PCIe 3.0. I'm pretty sure the 980 as well that I'm going to show you guys as well is also 3.0. It's $65 from PB Tech, and the Samsung 980 is $69 from Computer Lounge. Um, now both of them don't have DRAM cache, and I know I got criticized for putting a DRAM cache on, which was $78 for the MX500 from Crucial. Um, now you can go with the MX500, it's also a really good SSD. Um, I think uh, sustains, uh, it should be sustain writes will be better on the DRAM cache one compared to these ones. Um, but at the same time, if you guys don't want to spend as much money, either one of these will be reliable uh, memory for you. Now if you need more stuff, so for example, you need more hard drive space. What I always recommend is to go for a hard drive that such as the Seagate Barracuda, one terabyte or the 
Western Digital Blue. Um, they range around about $78 to $85 um, for one terabyte in New Zealand. And they can go on special for around about $65 sometimes as well. They are relatively like a good option, brand new. You can use that to put, store your personal files as well. But if you need a cheaper option, you can get a one terabyte secondhand hard drive just with the associated risk on it for around about 25 to 30 dollars New Zealand which would actually be pretty good per terabyte in New Zealand that's not too bad a price now obviously if it's second hand you probably shouldn't put any um, personal files on it I'd probably recommend you to just put your games on it so nothing sensitive any sensitive information should always go on your SSD or a brand new drive compared to a second hand one but if you wanted to save some money, just put some games on it. I'd probably go second hand. Just wouldn't put any sensitive data on it. For the graphics card, I've gone with a Mighty Apes NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060 Storm X palette. It's a 12 gig DDR6 GPU. It's only $400 from them at the moment, which is a pretty damn good price. I might actually pick one up myself. I think it's pretty quick. Only thing though is it's a singular fan here, so you won't be getting as much performance. But for four nine four hundred dollars, that's probably one of that's probably the cheapest RTX 3060 that I've seen so far yet since it's been released in New Zealand. That's a really good price, especially for this type of card. Um, it's comparable to an RX 6600 XT, so a 6600 XT will run you about six hundred dollars at the moment. And on special, the 6600 XT goes down to 500. So this is even better a deal, and it's equivalent to that card, which is awesome to see. Um, as again, the only downside here is that it's a singular fan; it's not dual fan, and it's got the reduced um, PCB design on there. So, and for thermal, it's probably not the best, but in terms of price performance, uh, that's really good in New Zealand. <laughs> Now, if you can't get this card, the one that I would go for next would around about the same price would be the RX 6600 398.99 from PB Tech. It's the ASRock one. It's pretty decent dual fan design, which is awesome to see. Um, this one is not as powerful as the RTX 3060. Um, if you guys wanted to go for something better, let's look for the one with XT on the end. And if it's $500, that's all good. Um, you can get them for $450 sometimes, the RX 6600 XT model, so the higher end one of this one. However, I think at this price range, it's actually quite a good deal for $400 for the RX 6600 if you cannot get the RTX 3060. Um, in this build that I've listed, in the link below, uh, I didn't put the uh, RTX 3060 one, so that one would just be in the video. I'll just have this one linked um, on the, or I'll change it later, but do keep that as an option. So this would probably be priority number one, and this would be priority number two. So that sums up for graphics cards. For a power supply, I've gone with something cheap. It's the Silverstone DA650. It's a gold certified modular power supply. It's $139 at the moment. Now you can go with something a little bit better quality, such as a EVGA Supernova or a Corsair RMX 650 or the RMX line as a whole, or even the Fractal Design Ion power supply is a lot better quality than this one. Um, but this one's good for a budget build. I don't think you're gonna have any problems, especially if you're not overclocking. And none of the parts that I put in here today are actually that power hungry or power demanding. So I think overall it'd be a pretty good option. Now lastly, I've got the Silverstone Faro R1 Pro. It's a ATX metallic case. It comes with four fans in it, so three at the front and one at the back. It's $109 from Computer Launch at the moment. Now, there weren't as many specials on cases this year, but if you have a look for the uh, Fantex P300A, the P360A, and the P400A, if any of them are under $110, that's a pretty damn good deal. So I'd probably have a look at those as well. But for now, I think the Far R1 is a pretty good option. So overall, that sums your build up to $1,174.34. I think it's a really good price, especially considering prices did go up recently a little bit. But I think the Black Friday deals came off a little bit in the clutch. So 
and it's not a bad build at all especially for mid-range gaming uh, you'll have a fun time on it playing a lot of eSport titles or even some better AAA titles uh, at least at 1080p or low 1440p so that about sums it up for today make sure you can check out wisetech.org for the latest post reviews and much more i'll see you guys there at wisetech.org and if you guys have any other questions you just leave them in the comments i'm more than happy to answer them as fast as i can um sorry i am working at the moment so i will try my best to respond to them as fast as i can again um i try my best but yeah uh that about sums it up thank you guys very much for watching i'll see you guys in the next video bye